Welcome to Minden, Nevada, just across the ridge from beautiful Lake Tahoe. Minden is world-renowned for its soaring conditions, and many records have been set here over the years. Today looks like a great day for a lesson. You're sitting in the DG-808S, a state-of-the-art glider built for competition soaring. Today you'll get familiar with the features and flying characteristics of this sophisticated aircraft. The most obvious difference between a glider and a powered aircraft is its lack of an engine. To get in the air, you'll be towed aloft by another aircraft known as a tow plane or tug. Press Control Shift Y now to let the tow plane know you're ready for takeoff. Once you're moving, expect the glider to lift off much sooner than the tow plane. Be patient and just level out while the tow plane gains speed. There you go. You're airborne. Level off until the tow plane is off the ground. That beeping you're hearing is the variometer. I'll explain it later. There he goes. Just stay right behind the tow plane. Don't get too far above, below, or off to the side. If you're not careful, you can pull the tug off course. Done properly, he won't even know you're there. Go ahead and raise the landing gear now by pressing G. Visualize a box around the tow plane and try to keep the glider in that box at all times. You'll know you're getting outside that box when you can see the sides, top, or bottom of the tow plane. It's best to stay just a bit high on the tow. The wake from the tow plane's wings flows downward, so staying high will keep you in smooth air. You've only paid for a tow to 2,500 feet above the ground, so he'll expect you to release at that height. That's about 7,200 feet on the altimeter. The tow rope release is the yellow knob on the bottom left side of the instrument panel. To release the rope, you can click it or press Shift Y, but don't touch it until you're at altitude. That would make for an awfully short flight. Speaking of shorter than expected flights, there comes a time in every glider pilot's career when he doesn't make it back to the airfield as intended. Either through bad decision making or lack of lift, he or she has to put the glider down in a field. This is called landing out. It's actually quite routine in cross-country soaring, but it's embarrassing nonetheless. Okay, you're nearing 7,200 feet. Time to release from the tow rope. Pull the yellow knob to release the rope, then make a gentle right turn. Nicely done. Now level off and trim the glider to fly at 80 knots. Now that you're on your own and powerless, you'll need to find rising air to stay aloft. Keep flying straight and level and I'll explain what to do next. Rising air, or lift, comes in a few different forms. The most common variety is a thermal. 
A thermal is simply a volume of air that's been heated by the sun and is hotter than the surrounding air. This causes it to rise into the sky in a column. On a sunny day, if you see a soaring bird flying in circles without flapping its wings, it's because it's found a thermal. This is exactly what you'll attempt to do. You'll generally find thermals rising above surfaces that absorb the sun's heat more than the surrounding terrain. Plowed fields, rock outcroppings, or concrete areas are always good bets. There's a large thermal over the fields just west of here. Head west so you can find some lift. Just like a powered aircraft, this glider has a vertical speed indicator that shows how fast the glider is rising or descending. It also has a variometer, which is a more precise instrument that indicates the vertical speed of the air you're flying through. You'll find the variometer just below the airspeed indicator. There's also an audio cue to help you find and stay in rising air. Beeping means the air is rising. The higher pitch the beeping, the faster the air is moving upwards. A steady tone means the air is either still or descending. The lower the tone, the faster the air is sinking. With these aids, as soon as you enter or exit a thermal, you'll know it. Okay, feel that turbulence? That's the telltale sign that you're close to a thermal. Just keep flying level and you should hit lift. Ah, there it is. Now fly circles inside the thermal to keep gaining altitude.
Ready to test your skill? Above you is a green gate. Keep gaining altitude until you can glide through it. The gate is at 8,300 feet. You'll need to clear all seven gates to successfully complete this mission. The secret to maximizing your time in a thermal is to stay slow. Try and keep your speed at 80 knots. Pull back on the stick to slow down. You should also be using a lot of rudder in your turns to keep the wings as level as possible. Nicely done. Now that you're familiar with thermals, it's time to explore another type of lift, ridge lift. Fly west towards the mountains. There are three more gates there for you to fly through. Right, you're over the foothills. You should be feeling some lift soon. Ah, there it is. Nice smooth ridge lift. To stay in this lift, turn and fly parallel to the mountain. When you feel the lift waning, turn away from the mountain and do it again. Ridge lift occurs when the wind is blowing up and over a hill or a mountain. This generates an area of rising air or lift on the windward side of that hill. Instead of circling like you would in a thermal, to make the most of ridge lift, you'll fly a back and forth pattern in front of the hill. You'll gain altitude with every pass. There are some dangers associated with ridge lift. You're flying in close proximity to the mountains, so there's no room for error. Always turn away from the hill. There are also turbulent areas of downward moving air on the downwind sides of hills and mountains. This sinking air can drag you right into the hillside. So always stay on the side of the mountains that the wind is blowing from. See the series of gates along this ridge? Keep climbing until you can clear them all on one pass.
there's one gate. Good job. One more. Nicely done. Okay, take a rest and cruise for a bit. Head west over the ridge toward Lake Tahoe. See the last set of gates? Head in that direction. Trim the glider to fly at 100 knots. You may encounter some sink on the other side of the ridge. Just head west, there's plenty of lift on the other side. The last type of lift to know about is wave lift. Wave lift is similar to ridge lift, except it occurs much higher up, above and behind the ridge line. When air is disturbed, it acts a lot like water and creates ripples and waves. As an air mass moves up and over a mountain range, it pushes the air above it up and out of the way. This disturbance causes a wave motion that can extend out many miles. This is wave lift. Keep in mind, though, that the air masses between the waves are sinking. Many soaring altitude and distance records have been set after finding a good wave. It's a rare day you find a good wave, and today the winds are just right. Just keep heading west and watch for smooth rising air. Okay, there it is, a nice smooth wave of rising air. Slow again to 80 knots to get the most out of it. The waves run parallel to the mountain range. You can climb in the wave, flying a pattern much like you did on the ridge, or you can just keep flying straight along the mountains. Try and line yourself up to fly through the next set of gates. The first gate is at an altitude of 14,700 feet. Ready to learn some more about this glider? A heavier aircraft penetrates the air better as it has more inertia. This means more speed. Many racing sailplanes carry ballast so they can fly faster. Ballast is weight added to the aircraft in the form of water. This extra weight means the glider won't thermal as well, so sometimes in low lift areas you'll need to drop that extra weight. 
This is done by opening valves to jettison the water. Don't do it now as you'll need the speed to get home, but the valves are controlled by the chrome handles on the right side of the cockpit. Next subject, flaps. Lift itself creates drag, and drag slows you down. Gliders usually have an enormous amount of extra lift. When you fly fast, this extra lift isn't needed, it just slows you down. To reduce the lift, this glider features a negative flap setting. Once the flaps are at zero degrees, just press F6 again to move the flaps into the negative range. To set the flaps to neutral again, press F5. Another way to reduce lift in gliders is by using the spoilers, vertical plates on top of the wings that can be extended to spoil the lift and cause drag. Spoilers are generally used to slow the glider down for the descent and landing. Modern gliders are so efficient that you have to do something to coax them to the ground. In the DG-808S, the spoilers are controlled by the blue handle on the left side of the cockpit. Looks like you're out of the lift. Turn around and backtrack a bit.
that's one. And another. Very nice. One more. That's it. Well done. It's like magic, isn't it? No engine at all and you've climbed this high. You can either keep soaring this wave or head back to Minden. It's up to you.
Wow, 17,000 feet. I think that's a record for a first-time sailplane pilot. Very impressive. You need an instrument clearance to go any higher, so that's it for today. Time to head back to Minden. Turn the glider towards the pointer and trim to maintain about 100 knots. This is the perfect time for those negative flaps. Press F5, then F6, and watch your speed increase. Careful not to exceed 140 knots.
Watch your speed. Any faster and you'll overstress the airframe. All right, almost home. With this much extra altitude, you'll need some help getting down quickly. Fully extend the speed brakes by pressing the slash key and lower the nose to maintain at least 80 knots in the descent. For now, head right over the airport. That way you can make sure the runway is clear. Time to line up with the runway before you lose too much altitude. Retract the speed brake and make sure flaps are neutral by pressing F5. Go ahead and dump your ballast if you haven't already. Turn the chrome handles on the right side of the cockpit. Approach the airport from the north and land on runway 12G. Use the grass strip so you're not in the way of powered aircraft. See that small grass strip next to runway 30? That's where you'll put it down. Looks clear. Go ahead and turn north. Okay, turn around and get lined up for landing. When you've got the runway in sight, drop the gear and extend the flaps to full. In this configuration, the glider will land much like a powered aircraft. Flare just a bit as you approach the ground. Use the speed brake to descend or slow down as needed. Once you touch down, extend the speed brake to full by pressing the slash key. Try and touch down at 60 knots.
Touchdown. Now keep the wings level as long as possible. Very nice. Great flight today.